All right, guys, jumping right into unit 30, 30A and 30B, two units that are uh, that border the Mexican border. So 30A is the eastern uh, subunit of unit 30. It borders New Mexico um, and Mexico. 30B just borders Mexico, um, and it's just along the border there to the west. Yes, it is along the border, and yes, you need to be aware of the potential uh, interest that uh, immigration has in that country. So, it, yes, I get asked this question quite a bit. Some of these border units that we really like, really prefer to hunt because of the coos deer and mule deer that live there is phenomenal. It's a beautiful country, has great, great animal populations. It also has human populations that may be unwanted by hunters um, just for the sake of their uh, you know, mental aspect of hunting and safety and things like that. And I'm talking about illegal immigration. I'm talking about uh, the Mexican border and uh, immigrants coming across and seeing immigration and potentially the dangers associated with illegal immigration in the United States on the southern border. Uh, I can tell you this. You, I am not going to say that you will not see illegal immigrants crossing or see them on your hunt, but I will say you do not have to be, uh, you know, stress level red or redlined about your safety. Uh, I, I have never had any issues personally. I've been hunting on the border since I started hunting. Uh, I've lived down there and yeah, it, it's unnerving is what it is. If you see immigration happen in front of you, it is unnerving. There are people that are not U.S. citizens that are trying to be uh, trying to get into this country illegally. I'm not being political. I'm just saying just the facts. They are trying to cross the border. Um, they are desperate for the most part or they have um, leaders with them, whatever. It may seem like it's a dangerous situation and you always hear stories, oh, AK-47s and like drugs and all this stuff. 99% of the time, um, it's people getting across, just trying to get to the nearest road, and then they're going to Tucson, going to Phoenix, and then going wherever it is they have prearranged to go to try to survive and live in this country. Uh, I have never had any issues as far as safety. We do take precautions so that that doesn't necessarily become an issue ever, but uh, you, you will potentially see immigrants on these hunts that are along the border, especially 30A and 30B. Douglas is a big spot for immigration. Uh, Douglas is the town that's that border town on uh, the eastern side there. So just be aware of that. Uh, let's put that aside. And, and I'm not, again, I'm not political in any way here. I'm just giving the facts. I like hunting. Um, and I've seen thousands of immigrants during my hunting uh, time on the border and none of which have ever been uh, aggressive n towards me and none of which have ever been holding any kind of firearm that I could visibly see. And I have had several conversations both in English and Spanish with many of these people. Um, I've had lots of conversations with Border Patrol as well. And so I'm very comfortable and understand the situation uh, for the most part. Uh, as it's a current, as it happens currently. So it does change and seasons change and administrations change. And so it affects border crossings. But as far as hunting goes, guys, which that's why we're here, we're here to talk about 30A and 30B. Uh, it's not really an issue. You just have to be smart, plan ahead, understand what precautions you need to take um, in order not to have any issues whatsoever. So let's talk about the animals. Um, 30A has uh, awesome mule deer. Awesome mule deer populations, very easy to draw, but there is private land issues. So 30A is kind of like 29 in a way that there's a lot of private land locked up in some of that flatter country, a lot of private land that is where the mule deer like to live. So they like to live in that stuff that's flat. There's a lot of flat country in 30A. A lot of farmland, a lot of alfalfa fields. The mule deer absolutely love it, but you need to be aware of the private situation there. Private land is an issue. You need to have access. Um, you need to have legal access, whether it's permission from the landowner or uh, legal access via public easement or state state land. So stick on the state land unless you have uh, you know permission. Uh, that the the mule deer population is great and they're fun to hunt. 
not giant, giant deer for the most part. I mean, there's some really big bucks that I've seen in 38, but for the most part, it's a hunt where you go because it's easy to draw and you go because um, it's easy to access. It's as far as foot wise, there's not crazy mountains. You can go in a truck, you can go in your quad. It's easy hunting for the most part, getting high glassing. So uh, the mule deer, that's the mule deer situation in 38. 30B pretty similar, um, except 30B has a little bit more pronounced mountain ranges to the southern border, but all the mule deer live um, in the lower country. 30B doesn't have as much private land issues along the border. And these units guys go pretty far north. So the more north you go from the border, the less potential issues will, you will have with illegal immigration. So they are literally looking to get to the first blacktop road. So on the if you hunt and focus on the northern half of these units, you will not potentially run into a lot of immigration issues. Uh, that's from my experience. A lot more mule deer country in the northern part of 30B. Um, there are the dragoons and stuff that holds that holds both you know mule deer and coos deer. Coos deer really specifically are in the higher elevation stuff in uh, in 30A and 30B. So focus on the lower country uh, in 30B, understand the access, and then same as 30A, understand the access points uh, to be legal. And, and for that mule deer, it's more of an issue than it is for Coosier. Coosier uh, for 30A, uh, the Chiricahua mountain range actually runs into uh, unit 30A. And so the Coosier pretty much stick in that higher elevation stuff in 30A. Uh, along the New Mexico border, anything that's high elevation uh, is is coos deer country. And they're really intermixed in 30A as far as coos deer country versus mule deer. You can be glassing and see both of them every single day you're hunting. So understand that it's, you know, some of that country is really, really mixed up. There's good populations of both, both species in 30A. Uh, 30B, same thing. There's a mountain range just out of Bisbee, um, holds good coos deer populations understand the access, but then anything, like I said, I mentioned the dragoons for the north, that's higher elevation stuff, great for coos deer, great for mule deer, um, and anything in between. So both 30A and 30B have phenomenal, phenomenal coos deer hunting and phenomenal draw odds. It's really, really great places to start, draw your first tag uh, and hunt. For mule deer, uh, same thing. I mean, I, great draw odds, great populations. Just understand that if you're going in there, you need to understand where to access it and some of the best places to start. So without, with, with all that being said, guys, it all comes down to scouting. And that's something to keep in mind too. Maybe you draw one of these border tags and you're a little concerned about immigration. You, you watch the news or whatever. Well, go down there and scout and actually see firsthand what it's all about. Because a lot of people's uh, mindset and a lot of what people think is because of what they've heard and seen on TV or you know the internet. It's way, way different when you're actually uh, ground zero and actually feel what it's like. Uh, people are always surprised. They're like, man, I, I understand there's immigration out here, but the hunting was really fun and all that kind of stuff. And those are the guys that, you know, that I've just personally talked to, whether they're friends or just, just a, people that I run into at hunting or my own clients that are like, yeah, you know, it was not a big deal. So just get, get yourself comfortable with it for you. Drive down there, see what it's like, see maybe, hey, you maybe you found some trash or some stuff where it looked like some illegal immigrants were really have traveled there quite a bit and you don't feel comfortable being in that area, then do not hunt there. Go somewhere else, focus on an area where there isn't as much human sign and still a lot of deer sign. So I hope that helped. Touching on immigration, gonna to touch on it a little bit with these border units, but great places to hunt. I love them. They have tons of mule deer and tons of coos deer and the draw odds are awesome for both non-residents and residents. So hit me up in the description the links in the description below if you have any, any comments, questions uh, about drop camps, uh, scouting packages, guided hunts, outfitted hunts, all that kind of stuff, guys. I can help you out there. And uh, hit me up in the comments below if you have any questions just about general, general questions about the units or however I can help, guys. I'm here to educate, here to help you uh, get fired up for the deer draw and, uh, and understand what you're getting into when your card gets hit and it says successful on your uh, Arizona Game and Fish dashboard portal because it's all coming online now. So anyway, guys, good luck in the draw. We'll talk soon.